December 16, 1964, general amnesty for all Mau Mau. Because their war against the British won Kenya's freedom, because they killed 85 whites and about 5,000 blacks, Kenyatta proclaims them national heroes. Kenyatta promises them their country's eternal gratitude in the land of the whites they killed. Few real Mau Mau remain, but the offer is too appealing. 1,400 heroes reach for their rewards. The whites' land trembles under their feet. Thousands prepare to leave. Real estate agency windows are papered with offers. If you don't catch the irony, the terms of sale seem absurd. 99 years to pay. The irony is deliberately funereal, bitter, and pathetic. To whom are staying on? Mr. G. Georges announces with great sorrow that his once prosperous farm has been put up for sale. All friends are kindly requested to dig out all flowers and ornamental plants from the gardens before the sale. Holy Farm. For sale. Fraser Farm. For sale. Sutherland Farm. Sold. Rennes Farm. Sold. Tarbottom Farm. For sale. Swan Farm. Sold. Go in. Go in. Go. Go to Mr. Karani for 54 pounds. Now I have two lovely candlesticks. What am I offered? 50. 50. 50. Does anyone offer more? 50 and 2. 50 and 3. It took three generations to accumulate all this, but now the whites can't take it with them. So they hire Indian merchants to organize auctions, like this one at Kainan Cup in the White Highlands. The auctioneers do a good business. The Africans spend freely. The old house is stripped bare. In the shadows sit sad spectators, the ex-owners, themselves just shadows of the past. Empty and silent, the old farms await new masters. Kenyatta wanted to hurt the pride of the upper-class English colonials. Only the pioneers of the highlands were chased out. The whites living on the plains are left alone. December 27, 1963, two weeks after independence, Kenya begins its agrarian reform.
poem by Kano Toynbee, an African, comes to mind. Erase every trace of the white man. Uproot the tree of his evil. Plow under his flower gardens. Make them bear fruits. There where only one lived, we will make room for 100. In Kenya, the highlands are a rare oasis of green. Under the British, they were a private white estate. From outside, the Africans admired it and desired it. Now, they claim it. Before, when only 150 whites lived here, it was too much for too few. But now, 10,000 Africans want in. Now, it's too little for too many. are leaving Kenya in these replicas of ancient wagons loaded down with pots, pans, and families. They are recreating the great trek in which their ancestors fled from Cape Town 130 years ago. The Boers will not wait to be dispossessed. They are the first to go. Their trek is hard and the display is heavy, but the message is crystal clear. It's a reverse version of the Freedom March. It will lead them back a thousand miles from Kenya to South Africa and centuries backwards into the past. <laughs> 